Okay, so quick to agenda. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the AI cell that we developed, uh, the one that we did in September, and then the one that we've updated for this version. Uh, Nikolai is gonna talk a little, uh, talk a lot about LLMs and he is like a LLM expert. So I'll let him talk about that. And then I'm gonna do a demo, which I hope will also work. <laughs> Uh, okay, so so yeah, so we created an AI cell, and so um, we created the cell in the previous one. But we also updated the cell in this one, and I'll and during the demo I'll give a little bit more detail about it. But basically, uh, the enhancements are it now deals with any of the projects. Before it was like hard coded to demo. Uh, because it works with any of the projects, it works with any of the ontology. So it works with Michelle's. Uh, act ontology, and so it takes uh, whatever criteria you put in, like uh, hypertension, and it'll go through each of the ontologies and pull out all of the hypertensions for that one, uh, and then it'll see is there any patients associated to that, and then if there are, then it'll put that in the query tool. So that was kind of one of the major enhancements, is that it will then just get uh, the ontologies that actually have patients associated to it. Um, so I think, uh, uh, does this actually work? Yes, it does. Okay, so uh, this is our previous one. And as you know, we had the, you basically typed in what you wanted. Uh, I want to find all patients, blah, blah, blah. And then what it did was, it, we had originally had it that it would create the whole ITB2 XML. And that was actually not that great. It was, the performance was terrible. I mean, it was worse than terrible. It was pathetic. <laughs> I wish we had $100 million of hardware that we could use. Then it wouldn't be bad. But uh, the other major thing, as people who know ITP2 pretty well, and is it in, and of course I didn't, is that the C full name would have like slash slash act underscore met. Oh, microphone, sorry. Oh, OK, sorry. Uh, I'm not going to sing. Uh, it would have like slash slash uh, act underscore med slash asthma tilde 123. The LLM really didn't generate that correctly, and the path had to be perfect. And so that was one of our other major things that was in the previous one. In the new one, if I can figure this out, uh, we actually have now voice. You could actually just say, I want to find all patients who have hypertension and have an A1C greater than 6.9, and it will create it. Uh, we also really narrowed down, yeah. This is, okay, I don't forget the stupid thing. <laughs> On the right-hand side, <laughs> uh, we really narrowed down. You have your instructions like we had before. I don't find all patients are female, diagnosed with asthma. Uh, but the output now, instead of it being XML, is just really fine-tuned. You have females, panel one. And then you have panel two, item one, two, three, boom. And so, and then in the second example, we have like circular systems. Mycona infraction. Wait, a, whoa, whoa, what the heck is that? Oh, that's heart attack. Yeah, uh, Victor's actually going to talk a lot about that after. Is that you type in, you say heart attack, and then in, in uh, the ontology, Michelle, is there anything called heart attack? No, there is none. There is zero heart attack. Okay, zero. So if you, <laughs> so yeah, the LLM needs to be smart to say. Heart attack is really my capsule infraction, okay? Um, and the other things that we decided to add was uh, the date constraints. So you have January 3rd, 2023 to April 21st, 2023, and we basically kind of created this format that would have the dates. Uh, the other thing that was also added, which we're still training the model on, is here we, on the third example, you have an A1C greater than 6.7, and then we basically created value, GT, which we kind of stole us from i to b too. Well, it is i to b too, so you can't really steal it, uh, because you use GT or LT, uh, and then you have your 6.7, and then you have uh, uh, A1C is percentage-wise, but you could have other values. So yeah, so that's how we updated the model. It's a lot more efficient, it's quicker, and as you'll see in a little bit, uh, 
that uh, we'll do a demo of that. But next is gonna be the LLM expert. Thanks, Mike, and certainly not an expert. Hi, everyone, I'm Nikolai. Um, hopefully this has been a good two days. I've only been here for the past two hours, so I can only assume it was perfect and all the demos worked really well. Um, but I was checking my email, <laughs> but I think it went pretty well. So we, we learned a lot about uh, per, you know specific data formats, proprietary data formats, and just creating an AI based solution on something that exists already when we were doing this project. And last year, what we realized was it's really hard to get an AI model to do what you want. So we had to really cut down this syntax you see on my left, your right, so that it can be more accurate. We actually, uh, you know, Mike actually created this syntax over here on the right, picking from I2B2 to make sure that the AI comes back correctly. But even more importantly, if you were here last year, the demo that created this XML, we sat here and we talked and we did a good job talking for two minutes, but it took a while to get back one query. Now it comes back almost instantly and what Mike will show you in a demo is actually really awesome. But we definitely learned a lot. We worked on this project nights and weekends, 8 a.m. every Friday. I can't say that we were all on every single working session, uh, but we made sure that it works for the demo um, and continually update and train the AI model. And if you were here last year, what you'll see is we took from a demo system all the queries and fine-tuned a code llama model. And this is really interesting because back then we had to write our own fine-tuning code. This is really only about a year ago, but now we can quite literally go into a UI like what Mike will show you uh, in a moment and upload our data and fine-tune it. Now that's really cool because it means anyone who can create a JSON file can fine-tune your AI model. You don't need to be writing your own custom code or, or custom uh, scripts to be able to do that anymore. And this is just a quick architecture of how it worked. I won't spend too much time here, but if you're gonna take one thing away is that always make sure to test your model as you are fine-tuning it. And testing we did uh, because out came this XML query and we found lots of problems with it, um, which is why we created that intermediate format. So that query validation and connecting with I2B2 is really important to make sure that we could do this, which is improve the speed of the generation. So we don't have a comparison, but last year was about two minutes or more per query. And the more fields you add in, the more data you wanna select, you are gonna get a longer query. So if you're gonna do a simple query, it could be 30 seconds. A long query could take 10 minutes to generate. And that's pretty bad from a user experience standpoint. And the key problem about all of this is we know what people queried for, but we don't know why. So as part of this data process, we're constantly refining how we create our instructions for our AI model. And so what you see here on the left of this slide is this is what an I2B2 query looks like from a code standpoint, definition standpoint. Very verbose, um, but it has a lot of necessary information in there. But you have no idea what the researcher is asking for when you just look at this query. You don't know that Nikolai was looking for patients with certain age range and ICD codes. Basically, you just get the query. So how do we go reverse engineer that? Well, we have about a million, I believe a million demo queries. Uh, Mike and I spent 10 months doing that. I'm just kidding. We ran all of it through AI. So we had AI generate the instruction and we constantly improve that instruction generation so it gets smarter and smarter without us having to put in the manual work of our day jobs. Uh, they call this in the industry synthetic data creation, and it's very hot right now, especially uh, with new AI models made directly for this. So we could try and generate this code on the left, and it's gonna take a while, like I said, but the main goal that we've been trying to accomplish is how do you make this faster? And so what we did was, again, if the, the user asks for a query that should look like this, they're going to get back this tilde syntax, which says maybe things like uh, asthma, it may give an age range, it might have various filters. We then compile that intermediate format without AI into the XML query you see here on screen. And then what we'll talk about in a moment uh, after the demo is how do we actually map that to the ontology? And so altogether, this is what the process looks like. We start with a model, we collected the data, we brought it all the way to training and integration. But if you're gonna take one thing away from what you're showing or what you see here in a second in a demo is that 
uh, and Mike has a great analogy of, from his car of why we added certain features, is that we try to make it as easy to use and as fast to use as possible, and we're constantly improving it uh, to make sure that the I2B2 tool is properly AI enabled and is usable from a user experience. So with that, um, that's just a quick aside. I'll hand it back over to Mike to actually do the demo, um, and then we'll take some questions after. Okay, um, okay, so we are, uh, yeah, demo, okay. I'm gonna put this here and hopefully, uh, okay. So I wanna log into the Enclave for a second. Uh, so this is a community enclave, and uh, last year we actually had the GPU actually uh, like within the MGB space, we kind of moved it across into the enclave. So we have the GPU in the enclave. And so this is actually, uh, so I, I, I want to show the XML as it's being generated. So if I... So log on. And so at this point, we could pick any of the ontologies, but I'm gonna intentionally pick the ACT9 because I r ran all the total nums on it. So as you can see, it has all the total nums. And so I know this, so this right here is called Whisper. And so it will take my voice and convert it into text. And everything is done on this laptop. I'm gonna pre pretend like my laptop's this one because I don't wanna disconnect something. But it's all done locally, internally. <laughs> So you can sel you select a model. Um, there's various different ones. Tiny has actually worked really, really well for me. And so you load it, <clears throat> and then you can speak to it. Uh, I'm just going to speak some stuff just for. Uh, um, I want to go to the Starbucks in Newton, right near uh, the Cabot uh, Elementary School. Okay, and I'm going to generate the query, uh, and it was actually pretty good. I mean, I want to go to, oh, not that good. <laughs> like I said, live demos, everyone. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, it was OK. Uh, Nick, I was talking to Nick Lai earlier that I kind of wanted something like this for my car, because when I said, say the navigation to it, it's like, I want to go to the Starbucks in Newton, it will send me to like Albuquerque. It'll be like, it's going to take you 12 hours. I'm like, exactly. I'm like, this thing is just awful, just completely awful. <clears throat> so I'm going to try a better query. Uh, I want to find all patients who are taking metformin and have an A1C greater than 6.9. Okay, and that one was actually pretty good. I mean, I think we should give a round of applause to this book. So, so now I'm actually gonna do something real. Um, I wanna find all patients who have asthma. Okay, so we have, uh, I wanna find all patients who have asthma, which is what we want. Uh, so now, I'm going to kind of move this over, and then what is it doing? Okay. Anyway, what is it doing? Did it actually send it off yet? No, I see. Oh, oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to understand my own coding. When I actually clicked on build query, it actually did kick it off to the AI, which is what's happening back in here. So it actually is running, and uh, you should see some words asthma in here somewhere. Uh, yep, right there. So it. So what it did is it picked out the word at. I should talk to this. Thing. It, tip, it picked out the word asthma, and then it's building a query on that with the squigglies that Nikolai was talking about earlier, and I had talked about a little bit 
earlier. Um, so now it's actually, so it's actually, as you can see, really quick. It's not taking the two minutes. It's basically going through each of the anthologies. So most of the time now is on the ITB2 side. It's going through each of the, as if you had done a search, like, it's literally doing count like this, asthma, asthma. And if you say search, it's gonna go through each of the ontologies. That's exactly what it's doing right now. And so, as a result, these are all the various different ontologies that it, it found, and it should come up, yeah, with a number. And there was 29,000 patients who have asthma. Uh, yeah, full sentence. How does it know which words to ignore? Right. Uh, that is all a snippet of, thi uh, of this. Okay? This was actually, this is just three lines, but there was like thousands of them. As Nikolai was talking, there was a million. Uh, basically, we, we took all of the queries that were done on the demo site, and then we basically converted, uh, basically fed it to the AI and said, create this. And so it would have like a question and then the answer. And then we fed that to uh, Llama 2 and said, create a Laura. A Laura. What does Laura stand for? Actually, like I said, I need the expert here. <laughs> Good question. When you train these models, you get, think of it like a sandwich, and it comes with, think of like a regular hamburger. You can actually train extra slices on top of that model that will tune it or attune it to your data format. So there are lots of these, what they're called LORAs. Uh, they're called a large, large, uh, sorry? Yeah, they're low rank uh, uh, adapters. So basically there's extra slice on top of the model. And so we take all of the queries we have here, generate the instruction or the formats using a different model, create an AI model that knows how to respond to Mike's voice, and then it selectively picks out just that tilde syntax. And we know how to parse just that syntax. So it's a lot of steps, but eventually what it means is that Mike can speak into his car, you know, you know, right on the screen here, maybe I2B2 for Apple Play soon. But you can speak right in, and it will come out with this format in the back end, and we'll create you the query automatically. Yeah, so we basically did a lot of training. Um, but I think that's, we're probably on time. Uh, are we good? What? Yeah, that was the demo stock. Yeah. We got the answer. We got the 29,000. Um, do we want to do questions at the end, or do we want to do questions now? Uh, so we, I have one GPU, uh, but when we did the initial one, we were using Nikolai's, who has uh, three at the time. Oh, three at the time. At the time. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So it, there's been a huge advance in the training code. Um, everyone's been pretty much huge advances in the training code to make these AI models, the large models. Um, particularly the open source models, they are highly optimized. They're called CUDA kernels, but basically it's the GPU level code that you can execute high performance mathematics with. And that code has been so highly optimized that you can go from needing huge, big, you know, clusters of GPUs to, you know, we can run a, basically an old version of a V100, which isn't really that old, but it's, you know, it's, it's five or so years back, um, and still get the same performance, if not better, um, compared to a year ago when we were running on many GPUs to get it working. So, good question. Okay. We have a microphone there if folks want to ask questions. Any other questions? Do we want to try more queries? Do we have any? Okay. okay. Uh, I think we should turn off the Zoom recording on this part. <laughs> and because I hear Michelle laughing in the background, I hear she could join us.
Come on, Michelle. You gotta ask us a query. Okay, yes, come on. No, no, you have to come, uh, you have to actually speak to the computer because if you speak here, it's not gonna understand. It's, I don't know if it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, yeah, okay, so, I don't know, just so, some type of, uh, I want to find all patients who have X I want to find wait, all. Wait, 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 okay. I want to find all patients who have Alzheimer's disease or multiple sclerosis. Okay. What do we see? Does only English? Yes, it only does English. Uh. <laughs> I actually, th that's actually a really good question because I did s uh, speak something and I said por favor at the end just to see if it would uh, understand the Spanish. No, it did not. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to build the query. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it took my English also. Yeah. Not bad. No, it was really, really good. Okay, so I need to go here. And see, it's now. Okay. So if I so if I refresh this query over here, refresh all, and actually that was pretty good. Uh, it's probably still running. <laughs> I think it's it's actually still running. It found zero, but it did find the name. It did the name correctly. Hmm. Did it complete it? No, it says it, yeah, it says finished, but it didn't find any patients. But it did actually get the names correctly. Yeah. Okay, I minus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I realized that. I wasn't sure if that was because it was finished or not finished, but I think. Right. Yeah. Oh. No, there's um, there's a little bug in my code right there. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. See if I can find that. So the hardest part, or one of the hardest parts about not generating the whole query is actually matching to the ontology. So that actually is a very, very hard problem, even with generative AI. We've tried multiple models. We tried generating our own models to do it. Um, and it's still something that we're actively exploring. So right now we're looking for a close match. So this is a great question. We really don't know why the AI model understands heart attack to, you know, the actual synonym. Well, yeah. So. Yeah. Actually, to answer Sean's question, uh, there were actually multiple sclerosis in the ontology, but there was no patients associated to any of those, which actually will explain why you got zero. That does explain the zero, but still, shouldn't it have some? No, because it has to have patients in the ontology. I, I modified it so that. Exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for the query. It was yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. I think, uh, yeah. I think that's it. Any yeah. other questions before we uh, move on to the next section? All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>